Hi, my name is Saper and I'm a uh, solution architect in AWS. And I'm going to show you how to deploy multiple .NET applications in Elastic Beanstalk. A refresher again. Uh, what is Elastic Beanstalk? Uh, it's a AWS service that allows you to focus on your code and it will automatically provision the underlying infrastructure that's required to run your application. I usually get this question from customers that is it possible to run multiple applications in the same Elastic Beanstalk environment? Uh, in other words, if you don't want to provision a new server for each application and you want to uh, use the same uh, server to run multiple applications, how are you going to do that with Elastic Beanstalk? Uh, it is definitely possible to do that. Uh, you can run both uh, .NET Framework and .NET Core applications in Elastic Beanstalk. The simplest way is, of course, to uh, deploy a single application in a single application pool on uh, a single EC2 instance in uh, one environment in Elastic Beanstalk. But you can also deploy multiple applications in the same application pool. Uh, that's only supported for .NET Framework. Keep that in mind for .NET Core. It's not possible to reuse the same uh, app pool for the same .NET Core, but for .NET Framework, you can definitely do that. And ultimately, you can also deploy multiple application pools, and each application pool can host a number of applications. Uh, if it is .NET Framework, again, you can have multiple .NET Framework applications running in the same app pool, but for .NET Core, you need a separate app pool for each .NET Core. That's, of course, if you're using in-process deployment for .NET Core. For out-of-process, again, uh, you can use Kestrel, and that's another uh, story. Now, let's see how that actually works. Uh, here I have two applications, a .NET Framework applications. Uh, my .NET Framework application is called Web Application 1 and it's running on .NET Framework 4.8. And I also have a .NET Core application and it's called Web Application 2. Now the first thing I have to do is to deploy, like create a web deploy package out of this. So if you go to publish, you can see how that's possible. Um, you could create a, a new profile or use an existing profile. So if you haven't created your profile, uh, this is how you have to do it. IIS, FTP, etc. And uh, the create profile. Here you have to select web deploy package. And then you specify a path. If you want, you can also go to the site. I've done that already, so uh, I just publish to the same profile. And uh, the same process also applies to that framework. Here again, you have to create a publish package. It's the same process again. And uh, let me show you, there's no difference here at all. Web deploy package. And you just do the same thing here. All right, so I have published both of these into uh, this path. You can see the published files are all available here. Now, let me delete this so you can see how it works. All right, so I have two zip files. Both are created by web deploy packages of the two applications, web application one and web application two. You also have to create a JSON file. So I have already created a JSON file and I've placed it in the same directory. Let's take a look. Uh, inside my JSON file, I have my application manifest. This is for Elastic Beanstalk application manifest. Manifest version and IIS config. You can define application pools. 
I've defined two application pools, for example, here. And then in the deployment section, uh, you can define your deployments. If you're using .NET Framework, you have to use MS Deploy. And if you're deploying a, 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 a deploying a .NET Core application, you need to use ASP.NET Core Web for your deployment. And uh, for my .NET Framework, for example, name is App1, and there are a number of parameters. App Bundle is the name of my zip package from the Web Deploy. And the IIS path, this is uh, the virtual directory path for the application. And the application pool, app pool, which refers to one of the app pools that you've defined before. Okay, now that I have these, I have to create a single package, including the application manifest file and the zip files of my applications that have to be bundled with it. Now I can zip all of these into a single file i'll call that package could be any name and now i'll go to elastic beanstalk console and i'll create a new application let's call it multi app.net Okay, I have created a new application in Elastic Beanstalk. Now I have to create a new environment for it. For the environment, I have to use the web server environment. That's the one that we should use for .NET applications. And for environment name, application name, and domain. Let's call it this and check availability. Yep. Good. You can provide description and uh, for platform, I'm going to use .NET. And for application code, I'll upload my application package that I just created. Version label. You can specify a string for that as well. Now I'm waiting for the application package to be uploaded into my Elastic Beanstalk uh, code repository. All right, that's also done. Now I can configure more options if I want, or you could have directly created the environment. But in this case, I want to change some of the default configurations. For example, I'll specify the size of the root volume to 100 gigabytes. And um, I want to change my instance type to, let's say, M4 x large and say also for networking i want to change my network vpc to this vpc select my public subnet and I'll save it. Okay. Looks good. Create environment. It will take a few minutes to create the environment and once all the resources are provisioned, Elastic Beanstalk will deploy my application binary into the newly provisioned environment.
All right, my environment is created. As you can see, the health is okay. Our applications are also deployed successfully. Now you, you can verify the application using this URL. This is the URL to the actual application. Uh, if I try to open the root, it will definitely throw an error because I've specified the application path uh, separately. So app one is my .NET Framework application. Now it's loading the .NET Framework application for the first time. That's why it will take uh, a few seconds to fire it up. Now you can see the rapid application is available. Now let's go back and uh, check the environment, the actual deployment. So if I go to Systems Manager, Manage the instances. Here, I should multi .NET environment. There it is. I open, start the session using Systems Manager. Session Manager, I can have a PowerShell session on the instance itself. See, we have INET pod. And here, there are two directories www.root and ASP.NET Core web apps. And if we check the www.root, you can see the app one is hosted there. These are the contents of the app one. And if we check the ASP core web apps, you can see app two is posted there. And here is the content of ASP development core app two. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Thank you.